We are here with our roundtable, familiar faces, Brian Crowley and Mariana Mancuso. We're doing it in the lobby of our WPTV studios, being mindful of protocols and social distancing. And so we thank you for being with us. Uh, we thank you for being here. I think people want to see our familiar faces, and you two are amongst the most familiar that we have. You know, we were talking so much about Decision 2020 and politics before the coronavirus crisis. And now afterwards, uh, campaigns have been set aside and yet discussions about politicians, about leadership, about decisions to be made uh, that are of such vital importance have never been more intertwined. And it's changed the shape of how we think about Decision 2020, about how we think about our local, state, and national leadership. Brian, uh, first your overall perspective on this post-coronavirus political world. Well, I'll first note that I measured we are actually six feet, 3.2 inches away, so I think we've met the, pro yeah. met the protocol. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, no one has ever seen an election cycle like this. Uh, you know, nobody has ever seen a pandemic like this. We haven't had anything like this in over 100 years. Um, so the economy, I mean, there are so many dynamics at play here. Uh, it, no one can predict what the future is going to look like, uh, either in the state or, na or, or nationwide. Uh, and uh, it's, it's changing how we think about just about everything. And Mariana, it really will redefine, and it already is, how we think about leadership and the qualities that we want in leadership at the local level, at the Florida level, at the national level. It, it's a whole new debate that we're having right now. Your perspective. Yes. Leadership is definitely at the forefront of a lot of people's minds, but it's also taken a kind of a second rung to individuals looking for people to help solve this problem. And so they're looking for scientists to come out and speak and give, you know, scientific responses and how do we solve this crisis. And they're looking to the president and the rest of the White House and Congress to really do something and to help. But I think that when we think about the election in terms of the conversations we were having two weeks ago, it's vastly changed because people are now focusing on how they can stay safe and keep their families safe and are not necessarily focused on the election of the primary season. Mariana, people say to us all week on Facebook and other forums, well, we want to keep the politics out of it. This is about the coronavirus, and indeed it is. And yet leadership is in the political ranks, and it's impossible in some ways, many ways, to separate what we see in politics from those leadership questions. And, We'll dive a little more into that, but that is a very tough line to walk for our political leaders uh, at large. Definitely. Everybody that is in elected office and is a leadership position in terms of everything from the White House to Congress down to state and local leadership here in Florida, they're walking a very fine line. But the reality is, is at the front of everything they need to be doing is what can do to keep the public and their families safe. Brian, to that point, uh, for instance, at the local level, Palm Beach County has been criticized for not having a more aggressive stay-at-home order as we speak here today. Uh, Broward County has one. There's questions, is that leadership? Is that being behind the curve? Palm Beach County says no, not right now. The governor, Governor DeSantis, has not issued a stay-at-home order for the state, has been applauded by some, criticized by others. All of this factors in now to how we look at decisions being made, who's making them, why they're making them, and how we're going to feel about that, and how we ultimately, at some point, decide now and into the future uh, who it is uh, running and leading our state. Of course, the governor just into his first year in his term, but the biggest test he'll ever have of his leadership. Well, part of the problem is that we've been getting mixed messages. We're, on the one hand, we're getting messages from the scientists and the medical community, especially the experts in, in, in this kind of pandemic. And then we're getting political messages, and the two don't always jive. And, and so when the political messages are contrary to what medicine and scientists are telling us, it puts, it puts local and state leaders in a position of trying to figure out what to do and where to go. Uh, I, I would, for one, I believe in, in being on the side of caution. Uh, on the other hand, there's great fear of what this is going to do to the economy, how long it will take to to come back. So, I mean, I can sort of understand the problem for the political leaders, but, you know, if they don't get this right, there's going to be a dear, dear price to pay. And frankly, I think the example has become Governor Andrew Cuomo of New York. Uh, you know, he's very clear in what he wants to do. He, I, I remember watching him a few days ago talking about don't blame your, your local government, don't blame uh, y y your mayors. I'm the one responsible, blame me, from, for the decisions being the Democratic made. Governor that's the of kind York. of leadership you need. Somebody who's you know, understands the problem, takes action, and moves forward with that action. 
Mariana, is there a grade to give leadership at the local and state level right now? And is it even fair? I can hear some viewers saying you can't grade on something that, as Brian said, is a pandemic the likes of which we've never dealt with in uh, modern society, certainly uh, in, uh, in the last many, many, many decades. I would be cautious to actually administer any type of grading. As, yeah. as Brian's mentioned, as you've mentioned, we haven't seen anything like this in over 100 years. And I would shy away from saying, you know, you've done B work, you've done A work, you've done C work, because that's really not helpful to the conversation right now. And I really don't think that that's what the public wants to hear. What they want to hear is how they can maintain social distancing not to the peril of their pocketbook and not to the peril of the safety and the health of their family. But leadership and political careers will be made and broken uh, on the way they respond to this crisis. We'll find leaders who are discovered and others who wilt in the moment. 100 percent. And we've already seen some backlash from Democratic leaders about Governor DeSantis and how he's been handling this issue right now. And he's getting a lot of pressure to close down the state in terms of issuing a gather in place order. And so it'll be very fascinating to see how that happens. But again, I would really shy away from saying you've done excellent work. You're you know, the way that you respond to this has been horrible and kind of just see how this pans out. Brian, we do have to look to November. It's still going to be here. Before coronavirus, we were talking every week about Florida's pivotal role in the 2020 campaign nationally and how those of you watching right now will play a pivotal role in who stays in the White House or who is the new occupant of the White House. Uh, and already one of the big debates is how do we make sure everybody's going to have a chance to vote in a world of coronavirus, talk about having some kind of universal mail-in ballot system. So the whole dynamics of how we vote and the fight between Democratic and Republican leadership about making sure everybody has access to voting is going to be critical this fall. You know, Governor DeSantis has been a little slow on this. He hasn't been willing to move forcefully in the mail-in ballot. Uh, I think that's silly at this point. You know, uh, just in every other aspect of the crisis, you sort of have to change the way you're doing things and change the way you do business. You know, the idea that we're not moving forcefully in the direction of mail-in ballots in for, everyone. Of this, for everyone in the midst of this pandemic is, is, uh, is just flat wrong. The scientists, you know, stop listening to the politicians on some of these issues. The scientists are saying that this, this is going to be around till as late as May 2021. The United Kingdom came out with a report from their top scientist a month or so ago saying that this coronavirus was going to be around till May 2021. Our own scientists are starting to say that. You know, we, so that means it'll be here in November. Uh, you know, so mail-in ballots are gonna be the safe prudent thing to do to help stem the spread. And there will be a huge debate on that. Already Democrats are worried about being able to get out and register enough new voters. Uh, Republicans and Democrats are going to have arguments about accessibility to voting. And on that, we will grade our political leadership in Florida and elsewhere. Mariana? Yes, we will. And I think that when we talk about a mail-in ballot system, I think that to Brian's point, it is prudent to do this. It's the safest thing that we can do. Just on Friday, there was a news report saying that two poll workers in Palm Beach County have tested positive for COVID-19. And I think that we have to protect the public and we have to protect the sanctity of ele elections. And by doing that, we can move to a mail-in system. Now, to that point, we see that the Democrat Party is having to kind of reassess their playbook because they were going to launch this huge grassroots efforts of door knocking and they really can't do that to mobilize voters and so they're going to have to move to a digital platform. Final thoughts in this segment about the shape of the race. We do have to think about that. Florida will have a pivotal role one way or the other. Uh, you've got Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders campaigns are now virtual town halls. Bernie Sanders not getting out of the race. Joe Biden, of course, thumped him in Florida but is largely gone silent beyond, beyond some virtual news conferences. Talk about the shape of 2020 as we move to November and Florida's role and how it's going to redefine what looks like a President Trump Biden face off. Well, as we look to the general election, what we're going to see is that healthcare has now run to the forefront of this election. It will be something that people continue to talk about once the shelter in place movements have been released and people start to go about the new normal and kind of move. And then also the economy. We've seen the president tie his campaign, his presidency to the economy and the stock market is doing a tilt a whirl and going all over the place. It's causing whiplash for a lot of investors and how he's going to kind of bounce back from that, especially with unemployment skyrocketing, is going to be very interesting to see. Brian, same question, your thought, and it's close to this segment. Well, the uh, one interesting thing that's happening is that Joe Biden, sort of the presumptive nominee at mm -hmm. this point, has basically been closed out. It's hard for him to find a lane where he can get out in front of the public and say anything. Uh, President Trump is on the air every night, sometimes to his own detriment, but he's on the air every night. He's getting a lot of 
a lot of time and uh, uh, it's going to be interesting to see as the as the months go by how the Democrats try to pull out of this dark corner that they're in because of the virus. Ryan, Mariana, thank you for being with us in our makeshift studio. We hope you are comfortable because we're going to be here a lot for a while, uh, understandably so. We'll be back with their closing comments in just a moment. And now for the Mancuso moment. Well, in times like these, it's really interesting to find communities that can come together. And Rodney Mayo, a local restaurant owner in Palm Beach County, has come together to form helping hands, helping hospitality hands, to offer free meals to those who have lost their job due to the pandemic. They can go to Howley's and receive a free meal. And those that still have their jobs are able to go and offer donations to the organization. And it just is such a great feel-good story from this week. And now, the Crowley Closer. I was in uh, Publix the other day and I was watching all the people that were working really hard stocking the shelves. So I decided as I was walking around that I would thank them for their help, for what they were doing. And they beamed. I mean, it was really over the top how much they appreciated being thanked. So it was a good reminder there's a lot of folks out there doing a lot of work that we generally ignore in the good times who are really putting it, putting it out there for them, often not making a lot of dough doing it. We should thank them. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Mariana. WPTV has launched a new initiative to help connect you and local businesses open during the coronavirus crisis. The campaign called We're Open South Florida, and we've created a list of local businesses taking steps to keep their doors open during this time of need. You can find their stories on WPTV.com slash open. As always, and especially at this time, wishing you and your family safety, good health, and thank you for spending time with us on today's To The Point broadcast. If you'd like to send us your comments about the broadcast, go to WPTV.com, click on the To The Point page, you'll see a section to send us your views. As always, wishing you and yours a good day and a good week.